want to make an important point. This is not all people in the world, this is Americans. Religious people, the, you, the, it depends on which study you get, you ask, do you pray to a personal God? These numbers vary, but they're high and they're up around 90%, okay? It might be 85, that's actually not important, that difference is not important for the point I'm about to make. It's high, okay, in the West, in America, 90%, okay? What percent of religious, what percentage of educated people are religious? The number drops. I'm talking about graduate degrees here. Among all people with masters and PhDs, the religiosity drops, somewhere around 60%, might be 65. The point is it drops with education level. Now let's bring in scientists. How about what percentage of scientists in America are religious? The average over all the branches, it's about 40%, maybe 35%. Uh, in there, there's a range, of course. Biologists, physicists, astrophysicists are lower. The um, sort of engineers and mathematicians are higher. So you, it averages out to about 40%. So this looks like, this looks like scientists are 40% down from 90% from the general public, but that's the wrong, no, it's 40% down from 60% because all scientists have graduate degrees. So the graduate degree in any subject gets you halfway there. The science is the increment from the educated degrees, I mean from the um, all educated people, that takes it down to 40%. Now you go to the elite scientists. This is a well-known number. 7% are religious, claiming a personal God to whom they pray and intervene in their lives. I submit to you that with the current atheist fervor that has taken on over the past several years, I would say launched, the modern atheists are called, launched by the Dawkins book and the Hitchens book and the, and the Sam Harris book and the like. And I was just in Borders recently. Couldn't believe it. I was, I didn't, I, I, sorry I didn't have a camera. Borders books, there it was. A section called Atheism. It was like, I'd never seen that before. It's like, okay. There it was. They had enough critical mass of books to make a section. So. Here's my problem, here's my concern. When you're educated, and you understand how physics works, and you're mathematically literate, and you understand data, and you understand experiment, and you go up to someone who doesn't have that training, and they are religious, and you ask them, why are you religious and believing in invisible things that influence your life? What's wrong with you? Okay? That's unfair. It's not only unfair, it's disrespectful for the following reason. Until that number is zero, you've got nothing to say to the general public. These are scientists among us in the National Academy of Sciences who are religious and pray to a personal God, and I know some of them. And you're fighting the public for the religious beliefs? Figure that one out first, because maybe there's an asymptote. Maybe you can't change everybody. Maybe that's telling us something. Maybe there's something in the brain wiring that positively prevents some people from ever being an atheist. And if that's the case, in a way, they can't help it. And you'll never know it because you're not one of them. So I ask you, first for compassion with the public, but you should target your exercise and your experiments on understanding that number. Because that's not zero. Yes, it's low, but it's not 1%, it's not one half of a percent or a tenth of a percent, it is 7%, one out of 14. If this were the National Academy of Sciences with 900, you'd have 100 people in here. Did I do that right, 7%? <laughs> carry the two, what, 65? Sorry, seven times nine, yeah, so six, uh, yeah. You have 65 people in here among elite scientists praying to their personal God. So, now, I don't care, I actually personally don't care what people wanna believe. This country was founded on religious freedoms. 
That's kind of, that's what, that's how that happened, okay? And what enabled the religious freedoms is that our Constitution makes no mention of God at all, which means nobody's God reigns supreme over anybody else's. And therein is the religious freedom that attracted all these waves of immigrants for centuries. And so, I don't, ha I don't have an issue with what you do in the church. But I'm going to be up in your face if you're going to knock on my science classroom and tell me that i got to teach what you're teaching in your Sunday school, because that's when we're going to fight. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no tradition of scientists knocking down the Sunday school door, telling the preacher, that might not necessarily be true. That's never happened. There are no scientists picketing out front of churches. There's been this coexistence forever. So to have the religious communities knocking down the science door, there's something wrong there. And I think back to Al-Ghazali and the 12th century and the fall of that intellectual empire. And it's got me scared in America. I wrote, do you remember that case in Jersey where this middle school kid, oh, forgive me, I forgot his name, I met him, Matthew, Matthew LeClaire, do you remember, remember this? He, it is, in his history class, the teacher was saying that Jesus is, is the only one in true saving, Christianity is the only one in true religion, and if you were not, you were damned to hell. And he pointed to a Muslim girl and said, she's damned to hell already, it's too late for her, and that Noah's Ark carried dinosaurs on it, and that the Big Bang and evolution are, 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 are not scientific. He recorded this and submitted it to the New York Times. And it became a whole expose on this teacher. And then what happened? The ACLU came out and separation of church and state, and it's a violation of the separation of church and state. And I said, you know, I don't normally get in those arguments because I, I got the universe to worry about. I don't normally, I let that go. But then I thought, no, people are missing something here. It's not a, it's not a case of a separation of church and state. It's not, it's not. Okay? I looked at the comments and the transcript. I ignored the part about Jesus being your savior. I ignored the part about Christianity being the one and tr true religion. I paid attention to the statement that Noah's Ark carried dinosaurs, okay? <laughs> and so, I said, I wrote a letter to the editor of the New York Times that they printed, and I will read to you. To the editor. People cited violation of the First Amendment when a New Jersey school teacher asserted that evolution and the Big Bang are not scientific and that Noah's Ark carried dinosaurs. The case is not about the need to separate church and state. It's about the need to separate ignorant, scientifically illiterate people from the ranks of teachers. <laughs> Uh, let's fix this one once and for all, okay? <laughs> let's, just, let's just fix this, okay? Once and for all. Yes, Einstein and God were like that, okay? <laughs> it's like God doesn't play dice with the universe. It turns out God does. That's what quantum mechanics is all about. He was wrong about that, okay? He mentions God a lot. And so all the religious people like claiming him because he's famous and he's unimpeachably smart. And if you get famous smart scientists in your camp, that boosts your camp, okay? But let's straighten this out once and for all. Here's a letter from Albert Einstein. I was, uh, in his later years, 1954, a couple of years before he died. I was, it, it was, of course, a lie, what you read about my religious convictions. A lie which is being systematically repeated. I do not believe in a personal God. And I've never denied this, but have, and have expressed it clearly. If something is in me which can be called religious, then it's the unbounded admiration for the structure of the world so far as our science can reveal it. Case closed. So anyone says Einstein was religious, just show them this letter, okay?